interest, um, which is now under the, uh, the, the, band, uh, the brand of global alerting platform. But in the US, this has been uh, used a lot for kind of loan workers and disaster and scenarios and things like that, where they'll have a collection of devices um, that get delivered out. But again, it's out on the Azure platform, so it's, it's um, zero capital investment, zero uh, hardware requirement to get this stuff up. And through um, tooling that lives in the Azure platform. So I've, I've just put these slides back in because a couple of people touched on it. So you're, that, that's uh, the, the bits that we've spoken about to the, down to the Windows Azure bit at the, the App Fabric bit at the bottom. But what I was particularly keen to talk about was this Azure Connect piece. Um, so in a lot of your environments where you are looking at a hybrid based application, um, Windows Azure Connect, which is a recently delivered part of the Azure platform. Um, so it's important to understand that Windows Azure isn't hosting. It's not just about getting away from patching. That's a core element to it. But as a platform, it also comes with it a whole bunch of these other kind of feature sets, things like Data Market, and particularly things like Azure Connect, are very simple ways as an IT team for you to start connecting, say, um, different systems together and then between different organizations as well. So whether that be between different boroughs, different councils, whatever it might be, there's a simple way of doing this without necessarily having to go through all the trouble of, of kind of building out a policy of updating firewalls here, there and everywhere. And um, so, it's, so it's, it has all the security uh, requirements that I'm sure Stuart can talk you through, but without a lot of the operating overheads. Okay, so that's kind of two years condensed into, into 15 minutes, so apologies for, for rattling through it. Um, but just in terms of, of leaving with a, with, with a couple of, um, of messages, what we've learned from our couple of years is as a technology, the majority of the development teams and the majority of IT, times, t t IT teams have found it very straightforward um, to actually, once they get hands-on, to start adopting this. It's not wildly different is not wildly new a lot of the tooling is common and a lot of the ways of deploying it are very common and consistent um, so our recommendation is where you can and through there are various microsoft initiatives to get you onto windows azure for free um, get hold of that and start using windows azure where you can even as in a kind of development and test scenario um, go pick those kind of low-hanging applications where you can um, but make sure that it is being kind of built in into that future plans because, as I mentioned at the start, that software as a service issue is beginning to creep in more and more. And, and this is a nice way, I believe, for your IT teams to start holding on to those line of business applications that are really adding to the value rather than kind of delivering just through the software as a service model. Okay, that's speedy speedy. So I guess in, 